A2 maths, compound angles. What I'd like you to do is just check these two problems just here. I'd like you to check whether the sine of two angles added together is equal to you separating out those two things. So for example, is sine of an angle A plus an angle B equal to sine of the first angle plus sine of the second angle? And also, is it true for cos? So if cos of two separate angles equal cos of the first angle plus cos of the second angle. Okay, so just have a think about how you might solve those two things. Just pause the presentation for a second, get your calculators, check them, and just verify whether they're true or not. They seem logical, they seem like they should work, so just verify that it's actually true. Okay, so what you probably hopefully found, that if you tried some simple number, for example, cos of 20 plus 30, so cos of 50, is that get or does that get you exactly the same answer as if you tried cos 20 plus cos 30? And the truth is, if you did it correct, you would find that they're not actually the same at all. Those two things are not identical, right? It's not an identity at all. They're not identical all to each other, and it's also true for cos. But what we're going to investigate is so if you had a situation where you had sine of two angles. How do you separate it out? What is it identical to? So, let's look at a quick geometrical proof. What I'd like you to do, please, is find the missing sides of these three triangles. These three triangles are put together to make a compound shape. So I'd like you to investigate, starting with this triangle that I'm highlighting just here. Okay, so starting with this triangle, I would like you to investigate the missing sides. Now we start with that triangle because it's got the hypotenuse given to you as one. So because you know that, could you work out these two sides using your basic trig skills? And then once you've got these two sides, can you then work out these two missing sides and these two missing sides? So work out the three or the missing sides of those three triangles. Okay, so pause the presentation and have a quick go at that yourselves. Okay. So with that first triangle, hopefully you thought I can work out this side because it is the adjacent. And I know if to work out the adjacent, I can use, uh, so katoa, so it's cos adjacent over hypotenuse, which will tell me that is cos A. To work out this one, that's the opposite. So sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine A, as it was going to be, sine A over one gets you just sine A. Right. Now, once you know these two parts, you can then use those as a new hypotenuse for these two triangles. So, for example, on this triangle just here, I'm going to be looking at sine B. And sine B, I'll get this opposite side. So the opposite over sine A equals sine B. Now, if you have the opposite over sine A, so if I had sine B, equals opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite over my hypotenuse, my hypotenuse is sine A. So let me just put that in. I could see that I could rearrange this equation by multiplying by sine A. And so therefore the opposite will be sine A, sine B. And that's where that part just there comes from. Now that same idea, I'm using here, I could use on all the other sides. So let's see what I get then. So I'm definitely going to get, just put my pointer back on, there we go. So I'm definitely going to get this side. This is the adjacent. So cos B must equal adjacent over sine A. So therefore I get sine A cos B. And then I can move on to this final triangle just down here. And if I want to work out these two lengths, I can use the same idea as that one, and I'm going to get cos A sine B, because it's the opposite to that one, so it's a sine. And this one, because it's cos B, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so you get cos A cos B. Now, once we've got those missing sides that we've worked out using our GCSE trig, we're going to use those to answer that previous question, which is to do with cos A cos B 
and sine A plus B. So we can use this red triangle that's appeared here to work out the two missing lengths. Now look, it's still a right angle triangle. We can see the right angle there. We can see this angle here is a compound of both the angle A and the angle B. So really that is the A plus B angle. And we're going to work out what these two missing sides are. So the first one is sine of A plus B. Now we know that part just there is the sine of A plus B because it is sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is one. So it is literally just sine A plus B. But also if I look at that length just there, I can see it's made up of this part just here and this part just there. So sine of A plus B, which is just there, is definitely equal to sine A cos B, which takes you there, plus cos A sine B, which is that part just there. So that is what we call one of our trig identities. Those two things are identical to each other and they form what we call a compound, compound angle formula. What about the cos A plus B? So that's this length just here. So if I want to work out cos of A plus B, not that bit just there, so this length is going to be cos of A plus B over 1 is our adjacent. Well, what's that going to be equal to? Well, what else do I know? Well, I know the length all the way across there because the length from there to there is going to be cos A cos B. Let's see that in that previous example. But I don't want all of that because I don't need this bit. So what I could do is I could take away that bit and that bit we calculated at the top. So to work out of cos A plus B will be cos A cos B take away sine A sine B. Now these identities are what's called the addition formulas or your compound angle formulas. And those for addition formulas that you'll be happy to know are given to you in your formula book. You do not need to learn them. But the examiner could expect you most likely, if he's going to ask you these types of questions, to finish off a geometrical proof like this. We've seen that in exam questions already, that you need to finish off a geometrical proof to prove these identities, even if you don't need to learn them off by heart. You can also make use of those to work out the tan formulas. Okay, that's what we're going to look at now. So the tan formula, tan of A plus B, is identical to, as you know, sine A of P over cos A plus B. So that's a trig identity you learned in your first year. There's nothing new there. Tan is just sine of a cos. But we also know that sine formula, which is written at the top just here, we could write as sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So that's copying down that one. And the cos formula is on the denominator. So we're copying down that part just there. So we end up with this. And that's, that's true. That's what tan is. It's not very helpful though, because we want to get it in terms of tan A and tan B, which is asking for in the top part of the question. So how can I get this in terms of tan A, tan B? Well, I've got lots of things going on here. So what I can do is to get a tan A, I really need sine A over cos A. So I could divide everything by cos A. And to get tan B, I would need sine B over cos B. Well, I've got lots of sine b's so, and I've got some cos b's, so I could divide everything by cos b. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to divide all the terms by cos a, cos b, and just see what happens. So I get tan a plan b equals these parts just here. Notice I'm dividing everything by cos a, cos b. And the reason why I'm dividing by the coses is because when you think about tan, it's sine divided by cos. So I'm dividing by both the cos parts. What does this simplify to then? Well, this one here, I've got sine A over cos A. That's good. That's going to be a tan. Cos B over cos B cancels out. So really, this part just here is just going to be tan A. This one, well, the cos A and the cos A are going to cancel out to leave one. Sine B over cos B cancels down to tan B. So I can see here and here, I've just got some tans. What about this one? Oh, look, this one's identical. Cos A, cos B, cos A, cos B. So that's just going to be the number one there. Take away sine A over cos A. Well, that's going to be tan A. And sine B over cos B. Well, that's just going to be tan B. So really, this is tan A, tan B. So we end up with a formula 
just like that. That gives me a tan formula, a compound angle formula for tan, using that part just there. And that is a proof because I've had the geometrical proof for these two just here, and I use that to prove the tan formula. Right, what about subtraction then? What about looking at, instead of cos A plus B, have a situation where I'm looking at minuses. So I might look at cos A minus B. We've got a similar geometrical proof here. Okay, so it's a slightly different picture. And I'm going to help you with the triangles, and then you can do the same bit of work you just did. But this time I see, want to see if you can get the, the full formulas yourself. So the, two tri the three triangles we're talking about is this triangle just here. So I'm trying to highlight it for you to show you. There's a right angle triangle. Hypotenuse is one, so that's le length just there. And this part just here. So that's your starting triangle. Just work that one out first. Okay, so that's your starting triangle. Once you've got that triangle, see if then you can work out the other triangles. This one and this one. Now that triangle I'm highlighting there seems a bit strange because it's this two angles put together, but just notice that these triangles put together is just A. Because it's B plus A minus B. So that angle there is A. So you've got this triangle, you've got this smaller triangle, and then you've got this starting triangle. So just see how you get on with that. Pause now and have a go. And if you couldn't get the geometrical parts, the answer to the first bit, I'll pause again and give you a chance to write up the answers. Okay, so you should have got sine B because that is opposite the angle. So we're looking at this triangle just here. Opposite there is sine B over one. So that's just going to be sine B. And this length just here, for the same reason, is cos B. So we've got those two angles just there. This one just here, sine A, sine B. If you hadn't noticed that this angle here is also A. Okay. And if you didn't spot that that was almost A, then you can pause it now and just see if you can finish off this altogether. Okay. And let's see if we can carry on. So we've got sine A, sine B, because it's got the hypotenuse. So this length from here to here will be cos A, sine B. Okay, so we've got that small triangle. Let's move down to this bigger triangle just here. So this larger triangle. And for this larger triangle, we have this length from there to there is going to be sine A, cos B. And for this length at the bottom, you're going to get cos A, cos B. So lots going on there. So hopefully you've managed to figure out which bit goes with which. And now we've got figured out all these missing lengths. We can actually look at the triangle we want, which is this triangle at the bottom. Now for this triangle at the bottom, notice that the hypotenuse is one again. So there's our one. So if we can work out the length of these two sides, we should be able to form our compound angles using the subtraction. So the addition formula is using the subtraction. Right, so sine A minus B, so this length just here. Notice because the hypotenuse is 1, that is sine A minus B as the opposite. So what's that the same as? Well, to me, it's the same as that full length just there minus that length just there. So I'm thinking sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. And what about the other length? So that's the length across the bottom. So that's the adjacent, so you're thinking cos A minus B, is that length just there? What's that the same as? Well, looking at a diagram, it's the same as that smaller triangle just there, and then that small triangle just there. So it's made up of those two smaller triangles. So that would be cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Notice in the change of sign just there, and that's important to notice. And we'll look about how the examiner does that in your formula books in a second. So, speaking of form books, grab your notebooks. You don't need to copy this part down, but you do need to highlight the fact that these formulas are given to you in your formula books. I would probably go as far as writing out all six in your notebooks, so you've got something to come back to. And let's just talk about how. The examiner puts six formulas, but makes it easy for themselves by writing in three different ways. So this first one, sine A 
minus sine a plus minus b equals sine a cos b plus minus cos a sine b. So looking at this formula, it's important to notice that that is actually two equations. The way you read the equations is either the top line or the bottom line. So I'll show you what I mean. Sine a plus b equals sine a cos b, because I'm talking about the top, plus cos a sine b. Right? Whereas the bottom line looks like this. Sine a minus b equals sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So that one's fine, because it's the same. But look at the second one. Looking at the top row. Cos a plus b equals cos a cos b minus sine a sine b noticing that the top line swaps from a plus to a minus and the bottom line does the same and even more important when it comes to the tan formula so for the tan formula you've got tan of a plus and minus b so if i'm looking at the top line i'm going to have tan a plus b equals tan a plus tan b all over tan so excuse me one minus tan a tan b so noticing the change of the signs in your formula book now in your notebooks it's a good idea to write down all six separately okay so you know which ones to come back to but reading the formula books ready for your exam just be very very aware of those changes of signs especially in the tan right what i'd like to do is just have a quick think about this why is this here next to the tan it, nothing's been next to the causes and the signs but for some reason they think it's important to write it next to the tan and it is important so just have a quick think why is that on there? If you want more thinking time, just pause. Okay, now think about the graph of tan compared to the graph of sine and cos. What does a graph of tan have that sine and cos don't have? The truth is it has its asymptotes. You're thinking about asymptotes. Now asymptotes are formed because the tan formula is sine over cos, it's got a divide in it. And the asymptotes happen when cos equals zero. Okay, now look at the compound angle for tan. It's written as a fraction. These two weren't. And if it's written as a fraction, that means that the bottom could equal zero. And if the bottom equals zero, the tan formula won't work. So this bit of the formula just saying here is you cannot have a plus or minus b equaling zero. So when you put in any number, k plus a half pi, think about in radians, so that could be half pi, that could be k is a, a whole number, so it could be 3 over 2, 1 and a half pi, 2 and a half pi, 3 and a half pi, so on. If that is true, that means that this part just here is going to equal 0, which means the whole thing doesn't work. Okay, so this happened next to the tan because the tan formed a fraction, and fractions could have zeros as denominators. Okay, most students just ignore that completely and just get on with using the formula. And that's fine. Okay, so let's have a look at how you could use these compound angle formulas and how an examiner might expect you to use compound angle formulas to solve some sort of problems in A-level maths. So I'll grab your notebooks, make sure you've got a give yourself a chance to write it down and think about it before you start looking at the answer. So I'll quickly read through it. Um, given the angle x is acute, that bit's probably going to be important, and that cos x equals a quarter, and that the angle y is obtuse, okay, so again we'll have to think about that later on, and that sine y equals two thirds, show that tan x plus y equals alpha root through minus two all over root five plus beta root five, 15, where alpha and beta are integers. So the fact that it's quite a, a horrible sort of exact number just there will be a way that the examiner can ask you these types of questions without you just dumping things in your calculator okay so we need to show that right so you want to pause the presentation have a look at doing it yourself and then we'll have a look through it together right so the first thing i want to think about is getting tan x and tan y now, can you find tan x and tan y by using the two trig identities already know? Not the more complicated ones we weren't la learnt last week, but these two from GC from uh, year one. So sine squared plus cos squared equals one, and tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So I'm going to use those to see if I can work out what tan x and tan y are. 
So sine squared plus cos squared equals one. Why is that going to help me? Well, if I know what cos x is, and that's one over 14, uh, one over four, sorry, then when if I square it, I could write that as one over 16. Why does that help me? Because it tells me that sine squared x is 15 over 16. And that tells me that sine x is going to be root 15 over 4. You can ignore the negative part. Because x is acute. Okay, so it's worth making sure you've got that down in your part in your notebook. And the, in your exams, it is important to make sure that you explain your mathematical reasoning as well. It's no good just completely ignoring the fact that it's a negative because it could have been a negative. There's nothing wrong with it. But in this case, if I tried um, sine x equal in minus 15 over four, you grab your calculator, you try doing sine to minus one of that, you'll notice the answer should, would come out as an obtuse angle. So I need to ignore it. Um, if I try tan x equals sine x over cos x, I can put my two numbers in. So there's a sine x from here or from here, excuse me, and the quarter from here. And that's going to leave me to tan x equaling root 15. That sits quite nicely to me because I can see a root 15 in my final answer. OK, so I'll keep that I'm going to make a note of that down there. And then we can investigate the other part, the y value. So what do I get then? Well, try the same idea. But this time, obviously, with y, so sine squared y plus cos squared y equals 1. Um, we've got sine y equals 2 thirds, so I'll put that in. I'm going to get cos squared equals 1. So cos, squ cos squared y equals 5 over 9. And cos y could equal minus root 5 over 3. Okay, so I've square rooted it. Notice I've gone for the minus. Why is it important I went for the minus? Because the positive answer would get you an ob acute angle. And so this is why it's important to make sure you read the question very clearly, because it makes a big difference whether the exam is asking for the acute angle or the obtuse angle. In this case, we want the negative. Just try and calculate it yourself. So cos to the minus one of root five over three is different to cos to the minus one of minus root five over three. And thinking of the cos graph that starts up there at zero, goes down and down to this part, it's this part just here, which is in the negatives, so the top bit up to 90 degrees and then 90 degrees to 180, that's the negative part that gets you an obtuse angle. Okay, so I can ignore that bit now. I've got my cos y. Why does that help me? I go back to this formula just here, substitute the two parts in, and that leads to tan y equaling minus 2 over root 5. And I'll make a note of that as well. OK. Right. So from just these two bits of information, cos x equaling a quarter and sine y equaling two thirds, I can manage to get what sine x is and tan x. And from sine y, I can get what cos y is and tan y, just by using our trig formulas. Right. Why does that help me get this formula just here then? Well, now that I've got tan x and tan y, I can go back to my formula book. I can write out what tan x plus y is. So that's what I'm going to do now. So tan x plus, plus y. So I'm using the tan a plus b, looking at the top line. So that's tan a plus tan b, 1 minus tan a tan b. So I've copied that from my formula book, being very careful with my signs. And now I can just substitute these parts in. So my A value is my X value, my B value is the Y value. And so I can substitute those in. And just to check, yeah, I can see some similarities there. Look, I can see a minus two and I've got minus two over root five. But that's a big hint. I've got root five there. I've got one here again. How can I get from one to root five, which I want? And if you haven't spotted it already, I'm multiplying through by root five that's going to cancel some of these that's going to change one times root five so if i multiply through by root five i get root five times root 15. see that there i'm going to get minus two great that's the same as that i get root five great that's the same as that i've got two root 15 so i've got my beta value as two this part here though root five times root 15 
I need to sort out. But I can see that root 15 is the same as root 3 times 5. So those two can come together to get me 5 root 3. And you could check that on your calculator if you needed to. And there we go. I've completed it. You can make a note of alpha and beta, but you don't have to, as long as you're showing the examiner that you get into the exact form at the end. Okay. Right. What I'd like you to do then, please, is I'd like you, now that you've seen the addition formulas, you'll practice some of that in a little while. There's not a huge amount you need to do at the moment with it. But one of the things you can do is something called the double angle formulas. So these situations where you've got, instead of just sine theta, but sine 2 theta. So you've got what we call a double angle. Now the addition formulas that you just worked with, you can help you work out what the double angle formulas actually are equal to. So I'd like you just to use your addition formulas, okay, the ones you've either written down or from your formula books, and I'd like you to think about what sine 2 theta is. Now my only hint to you is that 2 theta could be written as theta plus theta. 2 theta can be written as theta plus theta. So I'm going to pause, give you a chance to have a go at working out those. If you're not sure, you can certainly see the start of the first one. Okay. All right, so let's see how you got on then. So sine of 2 theta. So you can think of it as sine of theta plus theta. So there's your A value, there's your B value. Right, once you've done that, we can substitute the, each of those into our addition formula. And notice that these two things are actually exactly the same. Sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta, those two are identical. So because they're identical, this is just equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Right, if you didn't get that earlier, use the same idea to get these. So again, pause it if you need to, see if you can work them out yourself. And let's see how you got on. So cos of 2 theta, well that's the same as cos theta plus theta. Using the formula, we can see it's cos theta cos theta minus sine theta sine theta. What does that get you then? Well, it gets you cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Notice it's very, very similar to sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. But be wary, it is not the same. Although we could use that to change this into different forms, we need to be very wary that if you put a minus sign in the middle, it doesn't now equal 1. In fact, it equals cos 2 theta. Okay, what about the tan? Well, tan theta plus theta equals tan theta plus tan theta, 1 minus tan theta, tan theta. What's that going to get you then? Well, on the top, I can see I've got two lots of tan theta, and on the denominator, I've got tan theta, tan theta, which is tan squared theta. So there we go. I've worked out these double angle formulas. I'm going to be putting those in our notebooks because they are some important trig identities that we're going to be using. So in your notebooks, please, the double angle identities. Like I said to you earlier on, from year one, you only learned two identities. Now you're in year two, you have lots of different identities to learn and to be able to use. You don't get given these double angle identities, but you, can, you do get given the addition formulas, which are a very good way of checking your double angle formulas, if you're not very good at remembering things off by heart. So the ones we just saw, we saw sine theta equals two sine theta cos theta. If you don't remember off by heart, learn how to get that from quickly from the addition formulas okay we also saw cos 2 theta equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta but as i said this one here can make use of sine squared plus cos squared equals one and if you do that using sine squared plus cos squared equals one you can actually just rearrange it slightly because if you think about sine squared plus cos squared equals one if i rearrange this i could get sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. So sine squared theta is identical to 1 minus cos squared theta. And then what I could do is I could substitute that in and cancel out some of the sine squared thetas. So I've got this. Okay, and actually this one is the one where you substitute cos squared. So let me just go through it and just check you're happy cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So that cos squared theta just there is exactly the same as 1 minus 
sine squared theta. So really, if I did the line in between, this will be 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta is exactly the same as 1 minus 2 lots of sine squared thetas. If you tried doing the same but with this one, we'd have cos squared theta minus 1 minus sine squared theta. Notice it's a double minus is important on this, which is why this looks like it's the other way around. Cos squared theta minus 1 minus cos squared theta. So the minus and the minus make a plus, hence you're having two cos squared thetas. Minus 1. Okay. You've got to learn all those three, or you need to learn how to form them from the addition formulas. And the final one is tan. We saw that earlier on. There's only one form for that. So those are definitely what you want to get down in your notebooks and make sure that you're happy with those. If you need any help with these ones, you need any extra support with those, then you need to be um, messaging your teacher just to ask where those come from. Like I said there, that is an important fact. All right, so if you haven't got them down your notebooks yet, just pause before I move on to the next slide. Right, now let's have a quick look at this. Solve the equation cos 2 theta plus cos theta equals zero between the limit of 0 to 360. So we're going to be looking at solving this equation. We've seen lots of trig equations now, not just last year, but also practicing some this year as well with the reciprocal and the, identity and the inverse function. So let's have a think of how to solve this. So get down your notebook, pause the presentation, have a go yourself separately on a piece of rough paper or on your whiteboard. And then once you've done that, we'll make sure we get the correct answer or the fully correct answer down in your notebook. OK, so let's see how you got on. So we're going to use the identity. It's the identity that we're learning off by heart or learning how to get from our addition formula. That cos 2 theta is identical to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. If I do that, I can substitute it in just there. And the good thing about that is once I've substituted it in and wrote it out, it means that now I've got just single angles in here. I couldn't do anything with those two. You can't do anything special. You saw that earlier on at the very start of us doing compound angles that you can't just put these together to make cos of 3 theta. So we've got no choice. What we try to do is we try to write the equation out in terms of just theta, just the same angles. Right, obviously keen ones amongst you have noticed already that this is starting to look a bit like a quadratic. We can see a square there. We can see a single there. We can see just a number on its own. So if I rearrange this into a more commonly seen quadratic equation so there we go there's a hidden quadratic just there with the x squared plus x minus one then we could just use either the formula or you could use your own factorizing skills it doesn't really matter to get the solutions or you can use your calculators of course to get your answer so we're solving that and we'll either have cos theta equals a half or cos theta equals minus one notice that when you've got the angles I'm jumping to the conclusion that these parts should be second nature to you now. Getting the first answer from your calculator and the second answer from just using your um, skills with the cosine. 360 minus whatever your answer is. Cos to the minus 1 is 180. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a prove the identity question. So while you're getting it down to your notebooks, you should remember prove the identity from when we did it with sec, cosec and cot last week. And if you remember, when it comes to these types of questions, you must make sure that you're able to read and understand what it means by prove the identity. As soon as you see the words prove the identity, you should be thinking, right, I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to separate into two expressions, sine 2x minus tan and tan x cos 2x. And that will stop me doing anything silly like adding tan x to both sides. OK, so write down your notebooks, pause, have a go on your own piece of paper. See if you can do it yourself. You may do it a different way to me. You may get a bit stuck. You may do it better than what I've done it, in which case I'd love to hear about it. OK, right. So let's see how far you might have got. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said before, 
draw that line down, separating two expressions, you're not allowed to do something that crosses this line. I want to play with that to get to that. I want to play with that to get to that. Or I want to play with both of them to see if I can get somewhere in between, which is identical, and therefore shows me the route from one to the other. Okay, but to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both. So I'm going to go overkill in this question. I'm going to go from that side. I'm going to use my logical mathematical steps to prove that. And then I'm also going to do the same for the other side. You don't need to do both. I just think it's a good idea to show you both in this case. So the first thing I want to do is start on this side. OK, I'm going to ignore that side altogether, but I know that's my goal. That's what I need to get to. So sine 2x minus tan x. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this double angle. And partly to do with the fact I've just learned about them, so it's obvious I'm going to use it. But also, if I get rid of that double angle, it means that then I've got everything in single angles. And I can rearrange them. So that's sine 2x. I know, using the trig identity that I've just learned, goes to 2 sine x cos x. The tan x at the moment, I'm just going to leave. Right. Now I've got to this stage. I want to try putting these two things together. I know I need to put these together because my answer at the end is a single part without a plus and a minus in. So the only way I'm going to add fractions together is if I have a common denominator. Now then, the common denominator I should be thinking about is maybe if I write that as a fraction, as sine over cos, then I could get a common fraction of cos as a denominator. And the only reason to get cos on this part is by changing that to cos squared and putting that of cos. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this one to uh, sine 2 sine x cos squared x over cos x. So you can see I've just cancelled those out. That's that. And tan x is sine x of cos x. And now what I could do is I could write this as a single fraction. OK, so I put it as a single fraction. What can I do now with that single fraction? Well, with that single fraction, I can take out the common factor on the top. So sine x and sine x can be taken out, leaving me 2 cos squared x minus 1. So I can do that. Once I've taken that out, I can see I've got sine x of cos x, which is my tan x. And I'm just keeping a sneaky peek over here. Oh, that's good. What about 2 cos squared x minus 1? Well, 2 cos squared x minus 1, I've just seen that. That's in my trig identities. And I know the answer, also the fact it's over here, which is fantastic, means that I could rewrite this. And I could rewrite it as that, putting the sine and the cos together to make a tan. And then finally, this part I can put to that. So therefore, just making a short comment saying I've proved the identity up here as required. Keeping that closing statement in there because you never know where you're going to get your reasoning marks from that examiner. OK, so I've managed to get from there down to there. I've proved that trig identity. What I'm going to do now is the same idea, but from here. So let's pretend I didn't start on this side. Let's pretend I went to this side. So the first thing I did is play with that cos 2x. I changed it to cos squared x minus sine squared x. And then I thought to myself, well, I can expand this. and looking quite good because I can see a minus sign in the middle. So I've got cos x sine x minus sine cubed. That's not so nice over cos x. So although I've got a minus, I wouldn't say it's too similar. OK, that's well, not too bad, is it? Because maybe sine x cos x, if I had a 2 on the front, that would be that. OK, uh, so what can I do? Maybe that's uh, something that's going to happen later on. So sine cubed is a bit messy, isn't it? But I can write sine cubed as sine x sine squared x. It's the same thing, it's sine cubed x. But the reason why I've done that is because then I can think about this sine squared and I know what sine squared is, it's 1 minus cos squared. So the sine cubed is exactly the same as sine x times y 1 minus cos squared. Right, why would I do that? Well, I can certainly separate this out now. So I've got minus sine x over cos x. OK, so minus sine x over cos x minus sine x cos squared x over cos x. So I can rewrite it like that. Now, looking at this, sine x over cos x is tan x minus tan x. Oh, that's good. That's the same as that bit. This bit is going to get me a cos x over cos x sine x. So really, cos x over cos x, cos squared x sorry, over cos x is just cos x sine x. That could go with that to make two of them. And you can see at this stage, 
I've got back to this situation. And if I'd got to that one, I could have just stopped and gone through it. So therefore, that's the same as that, which is the same as the top one. So therefore, I prove the identity as required. As I said, either of those sides would have worked. They would have been fine for you to use. OK, so what I'd like you to do is just have a, um, quite a long time practicing all of those. It's a good idea to do as many of these as possible. Practice those skills with double angles. You will definitely have one of those double angle questions on your exam paper. I'll put money on it. So it's worth making sure that you practice and take your time with all of these different exercises. Some of the prove the identities are quite tough. And as I said before, when we're doing reciprocal functions, it's always a good idea to practice as many as you possibly can. The more you practice, the more you will have seen every different type possible. OK, right. Have fun.